Hello, hello, hello. Today I'm testing out the reverse coloring book by Kendra Norton. My friend Sarah from So Craftastic tested out the first version of this book and the book started doing so well that it sold out. So I could only get the second installment of the book. This one is called Through the Seasons, so presumably each of the pages will include something about each season. Creativity is always in season. There it is. At this point, I've seen a bunch of other YouTubers do things on this topic as well. My feelings on this could go one of two ways. I feel like sometimes I like relaxing drawing activities and other times I get very stressed by them. So we'll see. Let's peruse through the book. You might even say we're taking a gander through the seasons. No. And I'm gonna look and peruse until I find something that I like. Hold on, wait a minute, this page right here. That stands out to me. It seems like it might be from the winter season. Regardless, this page and I immediately had a connection. So I took out my fine tip point, fine point tip. How do you say that? These are for my Cricut, which is a totally different arts and crafts machine that we are not using in this video. But I like the fine tip point that this little marker has and I feel like it's great for outlining things. If you don't know what the reverse coloring book is, it kind of sounds confusing, honestly. When I first saw the title on Sarah's video, I said, reverse coloring? What the heck does that mean? And that was literally why I was like so interested in it. I was like, how do you color in reverse? Someone's gotta tell me. But it's actually quite obvious. It's like the colors are on the page. So it's already been colored in. And now it's your job to put the lines. Forget coloring inside the lines. We are creating the lines now. You can make it as simple or complex as you want. And the really interesting part about it is, at least this is the most interesting part to me, everyone is going to see something different. It's kind of like those like rast tests. Is that how you say it? Nope, that's not it. A rast test is actually for allergies. I was thinking of a Rorschach test. <sighs> You know, like those ink blot tests and they say, what do you see? And people are like, I see a butterfly. And other people are like, I see two people falling in love. And you're like, how the heck did you see that? That's kind of like this. You see something on the page and you start to draw it by outlining it. And other people are going to go, why in the world did you think this was a candy cane forest? I thought this was a dog. Well, you know what, I doubt anyone is gonna think this page in particular is a dog, but I would be interested to see what you guys would think this page might be. I personally looked at this page and immediately said, this is a Valentine's Day themed candy cane forest and I will not hear anything else. Some of these lollipops are literally in the shape of hearts. I mean, if this is not Valentine's Day themed, I don't know what else is. I don't know why I decided to combine the concept of a candy cane forest and Valentine's Day. I think it was mostly because there was a lot of lollipops in the shape of hearts, but there were also twisty things that reminded me of candy canes. I feel you could make a compelling argument that this was actually a forest of pretzels. Another reason why I thought this should be a candy cane forest is because the background actually had a light blue cloudy kind of substance. In my mind, the blue cloudy stuff was obviously snow and that further enforced my idea that this was a candy cane lollipop wintertime forest. A magical forest. Full of candy and love. I got a little carried away, I will say. I started outlining a lot of things and it started to look a little weird and overwhelming. I was adding some zigzags. The whole background was starting to look like a map. So then I thought, I know what this needs. It needs a black drop shadow for each of the lollipops. They're fading away and I'm never gonna see them again unless they each get a drop shadow. This is the type of project that you can just keep going on and on and on and adding more and more things. And if you're like me and don't know when to quit, you could potentially ruin everything forever. No, just kidding. You're not ruining anything. Honestly, to me, the purpose of this book is not to create something that looks nice, but rather to enjoy the process of outlining all of this stuff. I wrote Candy Cane Forest on the bottom because I needed to emphasize my vision. And here's
here is my hot take on the reverse coloring book so far. Because I went into this with the mentality that I was not going to create something that looked nice, I was just gonna have fun outlining things, I actually really enjoyed this and enjoyed the process. Have I created the best piece of artwork ever? No, but I'm okay with that. Let's move on to the next page, which is very obviously a page from the spring season. It's even got that spring green, a bunch of flowers. I love this one. I think it looked really beautiful even before I started adding any outlining at all. For this one, I wanted to focus on the leaves first. I love flowers and leaves, and I really like when people do those really pretty stencilings of greenery. So that is what I was attempting here. Does this actually look more like a pine cone than it does a leaf? You guys can be the judge of that. I wasn't trying to make a pine cone. I was trying to make those leaves that have little tiny leaves within them. Once I had finished that, I took out a brown pencil pen marker. Fine tip point pen tip point. I give up. I used a gray outline for the, what are these called? Why do I, don't, I don't know the name for anything. I feel like I'm having a total like massive brain fart today. Everything is just, <sighs> can't think of anything. I don't know. What is this? A lily? A daffodil? I don't know. I gotta Google it. I gotta Google it. It's a daisy. The most basic of flowers. How? How did I get that wrong? I'm outlining the daisy in gray first, and then I'm adding little shading lines with the gray. I also decided to add little circles to the center pollen part of the flower, and then also took a darker brown color and added some more outlines to the flower. This extra outline was something I really liked, and I actually ended up adding more extra outlines to things at the end. And now it's time to outline the tulip. This was the main reason I thought this was a springtime page because tulips are like an Easter time type of flower. That's what I think of at least. You'll notice on this page, I decided to use colors that match the background colors. For example, on this red tulip, I used all different shades of red. And for these bushels, bunches, or groupings of flowers, I used a navy blue. In my set of pens, I have a lot of different colors and I figured I may as well try to use them. This was also kind of like a stylistic choice. Some people do outline these things in all black, which I do think looks nice sometimes. It just depends on what you're going for. But for this page, I was going for colors that went with the background colors. And here we have at the end the extra outline for each of the flowers I was referring to. I enjoy this page. I did add some extra little details off camera. You can see in the leaves there's actually some blue added in there. I also added what I call a sketchy outline, which is basically just sketchy lines that are outlining each of the objects in this scene. I've decided to name this piece Blossom just because I like the word Blossom and that's what's happening here. What an enjoyable spring page. Let's move on to the next page. I've decided to get weird here. I really enjoy drawing cute cartoons with faces and I was missing that. When I turned to this page in the summer season, I saw so many blobs that were actually just combinations of animals. Here we have a bunny sea otter hybrid and above him is a worm fish. Above that, I think it's undeniable that we have an elephant fish combination. Perhaps it's a fish -ifant. The elephant could also be part worm or caterpillar because it is quite long and it does have some leg fins. On the side of the page, I saw what was very obviously a fish with a big nose. He's so cute, I love him. Added a shark coming out of the water slash clouds. And right over here, we had some very cute little tiny fish blobs happening. I colored them in and turned them into tiny fish friends. On the bottom right of the page, I saw something very strange, but I had to follow my intuition. There was a man swimming in the abyss, but it's not just any man, it's a fish man. Wait a minute, no, they have a name for that, Marissa. It's a merman. After that, I went around and labeled all of my combinations so that I wouldn't forget what I was actually trying to draw here. And here we have the final result of my weird things that I have drawn. This was really fun. I have to say, I had the most fun doing this page because I got to draw little weird combinations of things and be like, oh, this of course looks like a sea otter combined with a bunny rabbit. Obviously, I love my elephant slash fish combination I've created. I love the worm fish and who could forget about this guy? 
If you want to see more drawing videos, I have a bunch of different playlists on different prompt journals like draw your journal, wreck this journal, and create this book. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye!